start with station one, and I really think it's important for an awareness standpoint, a little bit of a breathing prime, and uh, just some range of motion to start here. And remember, much of what we think is a mobility problem, as I said before, isn't really tightness. Sometimes it's just tone or tension. So Brett, what I'm gonna do is just set up with as narrow base as I feel comfortable with, and it's okay to start wide and then work in, but trying to get that narrow base is really helpful because this isn't just clubs. This is now balance, this is now movement. So I'm gonna start a little swinging sequence that in slow motion has me going to here and going in front and behind. And I really never focus on the back club. I just basically raise the front one like a candlestick and then I get a little bit of a knee movement, a little bit of a momentum converting this little pistoning effect with my legs to this nice little tension dump. I can look behind me or I can look up. But the most important thing for doing this is not movement, it's actually breath. And so when I'm here, I want you to really think about exhale. And when I'm here, I want to think about inhale. But even though you might perceive this as the exercise exertion, and we're taught to exhale on exertion, it's totally different. The inhale is that spontaneous subconscious stability. So I want you to try this because it, it, it's a lot to think about, but pretty soon your knee, your clubs, and your breath will sync up. So it's... And I would put that up against static stretching any day if it's appropriate. And it's almost appropriate for everybody. Meet them where they are. Got it. Now the pace. You picked up some speed there as you got going into it, but I'm going to start slower. I want you to. I, I, I want you to. And when you feel comfortable, you'll know exactly what to do. And that's all the cues you need. This is one of the most simple things you can do with clubs. And, and that's why I love it so much, because I can use it with almost any exercise as a way to dump some tension before we start coaching a more complex movement. Awesome, let's All give right. it a try. All right. So I'll get, get set here. So we wanna start here. Mm -hmm. Now, as I drop and lift, mm -hmm. drop and lift. And now I sink the breathing in. You know what I just realized? What did you realize? I'm not as good looking behind me to my left as I am looking up to my left. I almost always default to looking up. On my right side, it was natural to do either. On my left side, I actually struggled to turn versus look up. All right, well, so I, I think that's interesting. The, the fact that you're aware of that yep. is awesome. And I'm gonna give you one more. This is a great little thing to add on. So now that we got this move, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, I'm 50-50. If I park this foot back but leave my thighs flat, I'm not gonna hit myself with a club, but I'm predominantly doing all this on that left leg. Now one thing, if you got a balance problem, you're gonna wanna lock that knee. And you didn't lock it the first time, so don't lock it now. So I'm gonna go. You should have no reason to fall. This is a, a, a kickstand. You're supposed to use it, but keep as much weight as you can on that foot and then go the other way. So now we can see, do you not like turning because you don't like balancing on one side? Or do you not like turning because your neck, your T-spine, your shoulder? And so I'm not trying to evaluate you because no matter what, three minutes from now, the problem's pretty much going to be polished or completely go away. So let's just not overanalyze it. Let's just experience it. Awesome. Awareness is the key. I think so. Okay. So establish single leg stance. <sighs> Whoa. Hey, that caught me there. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. Switch so legs and just, just see. Yep. Because I, got, I want you guys to realize this, this is your first time doing this, right? It is. So, so I want you, I've been practicing this for the last two summers just as a little pre-workout warm-up and stuff like that. First time you've done this, but yet you don't have to have a huge background in Indian clubs to do this tension dump, but you're already finding out stuff and we're halfway through station one. So, <laughs> so let's reset. 
So now I'm right leg. Boy, I am just learning a lot. I'm going back to my left for a second because I want to I want to test something real quick. <laughs> there it is. I hope you guys are watching. Brett's not intimidated by these moves and he's not trying to pose them or force anything. He's letting the movement sort of help him become more aware of a very fluid movement that actually, once you start getting good at this, the number one thing you forget is your arms and you simply get your legs to do most of the movement. <laughs> do me a favor. I love um, this. Here's what I want you to do. When you're really forcing yourself single leg, put your foot back, but be 50-50. Got it. Okay, and then come off the 50-50 and see if that allows you a little bit easier on-ramp. We're not trying to make this stuff hard for people. We're dumping tension, not making it, so the last thing we're doing is performing this or overcoaching it. Right. The awareness is built right in. You just be patient, because you're getting ready to tell me most of the things I wish you already knew. So. You will notice swinging those clubs faster actually can give you some balance. You won't notice it until you go both feet down again, but the momentum of swinging those clubs actually helps you find a more central axis, just like I think sometimes rolling in the right time helps people find that central axis before they start working on single leg stance. Let's go back to symmetrical and see what happens. Okay. way more comfortable turning to the left. No, it's, it's awesome. And the other thing that, that has helped me, and I don't know if it helps you, is I see a lot of people sort of protecting that posture. And what I caught myself doing is sort of slouching a little bit. I've got neck problems, I got posture problems. I started swinging this one and presenting that one to the sky. It preloads the lat so you can come down and really whack-a-mole, right? And then this one goes immediately up. So it's like this hard slam down creates this momentum. So do me a favor, lift with, with sort of intention of going vertical and just sort of slam it down a little bit. You're a big, strong guy, and that'll pull you right into the next move. Right, right into my pause. Got it. This is, this is the pause that makes the melody. So. And then if we go back single leg, what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna pull my punch a little bit. Okay. I'm not gonna to try to turn or lift as far. Perfect. Cause that is still really challenging for me, but I think left is a problem. That's, that's interesting. I mean, I'm just, I'm picking up on all of these things. So I just, the awareness piece of this is just, uh, I love it. Well, how about the person who just did a hurdle step? You saw a huge asymmetry. They are oblivious to the fact that you've already identified 40% worse balance on the, you can talk to them about it, or you can give them something that distracts their conscious mind into a activity and is relying on subconscious balance. And believe it or not, three days in, if you do this in small packages, just like we've learned, instead of trying to turn it into a half hour workout, it's gone before you know it, or gone before you identify what it is. And you said something a minute ago about dump and tension. Uh -huh. So what's, why would I want to do that? And how does this help me do it? Have you ever sat in traffic for a half hour not liking the people around you? <laughs> That's a very tense Once or moment twice. and you're completely at rest. And, and I honestly think when we take a half hour, an hour out of our life to exercise and make tension, one of the worst things we can bring to that is seated posture, left right asymmetry, um, poor neck position, poor airway. So believe it or not, the very first thing I do for your posture is the breath. It's <gasps> right? Inhale actually puts air in you, so you're not gonna over-rotate or extend because you just filled up. So you've got a little bit of intra-abdominal pressure, but not like I'm lifting heavy weight. And every other thing I show you, every other station I show you, can this please be your default? You might get frustrated again when we step or squat or hinge, 
But every time I want you to cleanse the palate and go back to this. So there is no rest break here. The active rest is actually going to become the breathing pump that this little rotation station one is for us. Excellent.